Sometimes it's not a good idea to loan your guitars to friends. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I found a really interesting tale on reverb that I wanted to share, because sometimes if you lend a guitar out, it doesn't necessarily come back the way you expect. So our journey today starts with a 50s Les Paul special that would have looked something like this brand new from the factory. So the story goes, at the ripe age of 13, a young boy and his three bandmates all chip in to buy this guitar from its original owner. Circa 1964, so this thing was just a used instrument at this time. Not much different than something from 2018 today. And the reason why the original owner was selling it? He was getting out of the music business. However, in the late 60s, one of his friends that was in a different group was going out on tour and asked if he could borrow it. So he said, sure, you can take my Les Paul special out. However, when it was returned, it then looked like this, and his friend said, no need to thank me. It's now custom. It's not like all the others out there. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> That's either a really elaborate made-up story, or his friend was just completely out of his mind when he did this. So here we go, here's the new Gibson made-to-measure recreation in the future. Pink burst into natural mahogany. Ah, maybe if they would have continued on and gave it a zoot suit and or, probably more appropriately, the fool style paint job, it could have been cool. It's like they started and then they just stopped. But this is what we call vintage perimeter burst. And it just looks so awful because it's got the whole 70s clown burst going on. It's such a shame that the original TV yellow was taken off. And we no longer have a pickup cover over our bridge pickup, which has apparently been replaced. The knobs are also modern. And something's definitely been swapped around with our toggle switch here, but it's just a good restoration job away from looking good again. And normally, when it's an old refinish, I'm against redoing it because sometimes there is some quirk in history to it, but this is one I can't get behind. I feel so bad for this guy, loaning out his guitar and then it comes back like this. But hey, at least they had the decency to also do the custom paint job on the back and... Oh my goodness, there's a custom bracket screwed into the guitar there to mount your output jack? I'm not sure what's going on there. Might have needed some reinforcement. But ah, uh, he cheaped out on him, didn't burst the neck and headstock. Probably a better thing, because that would have affected how this thing felt to play. But it appears to still have the original knobs in the case. But besides a replaced truss rod cover, the headstock actually looks pretty good. I would call that one a restoration candidate. But what really stinks here is... We lost our serial number in this process, because it would have originally been inked on back here. So let's see here, recent sales of these exact models. Now remember, Reverb doesn't show you the actual condition of these things, and some guys' definition of very good is has headstock repair and many replaced parts. But it seems like they've been selling in the 10 to 14-ish range. So how much is this poor example being listed at? 9,000. Maybe if he's got some room in this price, somebody could pick that up to restore it. The missing serial number kind of stinks, but it doesn't appear to have any major breaks, cracks, or repairs that you couldn't hide under a new finish. But before we continue, we need to have a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. I've been shopping with Sweetwater for over 10 years. If you're looking to buy music gear, such as guitars, banjos, ukuleles, DJ equipment, or even the computers that you need to help you create all that. They are your place and they're happy to ship it to your door or you can visit their Fort Wayne, Indiana location. And even if you're not in the market for anything, they've got a great website to window shop because you can see each individual guitar that they're selling, take a look at their top, the weight, and if you are local, they do events all the time, such as Gear Fest that you just missed. However, you can still check out the fun videos. Thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring tonight's episode. Now let's get back to the guitars. But now let's talk this guitar. So this was the leading photo and I could instantly tell what this was. It's a late 50s Les Paul Custom. It's got a beautiful mahogany top, which you don't normally see because it's covered over the black paint, but somebody has resto modded this thing. So a new finish, new pickups. We've got maybe a headstock break off that you still need to fix. Something's going on here. We've got strings on the guitar, but at first I thought this was like a project they were selling. But then I got to this photo and oh, that's just the original headstock. Something happened to this thing and they replaced it. And I'm not gonna say they did the best job in the world. The logo's a little bit wonky and they definitely copied the 70s Gibson logo rather than the original. But at least you still have this to prove that that was originally on this guitar. Looking at the back side of this headstock, it looks like we've got some sort of a number here. Normally you wouldn't have that in this era. It'd be an ink stamp. It almost looks like you can vaguely make out a Made in USA stamp here. Conspiracy theory. Did that headstock ever belong to this guitar? But I just love that mahogany top. 
they did a top-notch job refinishing it. From the photos, don't ever buy a refinished guitar online because some are better than others. But we've got some sort of an aftermarket Bigsby on here. But it's such a shame that there weren't more vintage natural ones made back in the 50s. But I like the seller's photos here with a vintage suitcase front and back. But with this photo, you can tell, yes, there is a scarf joint right here. So somebody had to place an entirely new headstock onto that neck. But it looks like they put a serial number back here when they did that. We've got vintage Grover tuners. So having this there definitely helps the tail. However, remember, you can buy those things separately. Occasionally, they'll pop up. And that looks like they refretted it at the same time, but maybe redid the binding to give it the fret nibs. Because this era of frets are known for being really flat and low and skinny. So maybe they had to replace the entire fretboard. But as far as a listing, unfortunately, we didn't get too much to go off of. It just said 1959 Les Paul Custom Player Grade Original Patent Sticker PAFs. Oh, wow. Double whites. That's nice. I thought those were replaced. And then they've got full details on their page. Or you can call them up. But they were asking about $20,000 for it. And they're in the UK market. So that was definitely priced within the realm of possibilities. I kind of had a feeling it wouldn't last too long. But now that I've really dug into it, I've got a few more questions. But I'm not really looking to own this guitar. So if you're interested, maybe see if they still have it available. But while on the topic of weird, wacky, modified guitars, here's something advertised as a 1960s Gibson Melody Maker. So a quick history of Melody Makers. First, they look like this. Then they look like this. Weird double cutaway shape. Then they adapted the weird freaky fish shape things that I love so much. They're quirky and the neck profiles on them are fantastic. And then eventually we adopted the SG body shape. And those are cool too, but way more expensive. So they're saying this is a 1960s melody maker. So it's kind of hard to judge exactly what it started life as. It doesn't really seem to follow the contours of anything. It almost has like a Hagstrom shape. But let's just say maybe it started life as one of the double cutaway versions. So if indeed that is true, they had to do some modifications down here and then they had to do an additional route back here, which would then mean this has to have a completely new top onto it because it's looking a little bit too chunky. It has no edges to it. But since it would have a new top, that means we can't look for existing screw holes from other stuff. I would have to see it lined up side by side to a different melody maker because body shape just doesn't quite look right. And then when we get to our headstock, it's got some additional weird things going on. That's definitely not your usual Gibson decal. Goofy little trademark logo up here. But then when we flip it over to the back, you can tell it's wing headstock constructed. Now this could still technically be legit because you can kind of see the Melody Maker headstock. So the reason why Melody Maker headstocks look like this, all goofy, weird, and short, it's because they don't have the headstock wings on them. So you can do conversion jobs to make them look traditional. But whatever it is, it's old. I mean, it's quirky. It's got some charm to it. But it was for sale for about $1,650. Now, if you want to make your own project, you could come over here. Here's one of the freaky fish ones. I'm going to be real with you here. 1200 bucks can buy you a completely original one with some player's wear if you're patient. But this one's got some good wood grain. Refinish that thing in an aged Pelham blue and you're going to be good to go. Now, somebody's routed it out for a humbucker, but honestly, that's probably a good thing. They did the sin, so you get to enjoy it. Oh, and they also gave you an intonatable bridge. How nice of them. However, with those filled in routes, you're probably going to have to go for a solid Pelham blue instead of a slightly transparent to see that wood grain, which is such a shame. But if you know how to do finishing work, it seems to be a pretty decent project. And sweet, we do have the original serial number. And evidence of, I would say at least, at least three different tuner sets. So you've got your work cut out for you on the back. But it appears to be solid. No major breaks, cracks, or repairs. And ooh, he linked something else that he liked. So here's one that somebody else did. Now this is the double pickup version and they gave it a gold top and they put binding on it. That's just silly. It must be painted on, right? Nah, it looks like it could be legit. And they did a little bit of aging to the finish. Nice. So it's just like a full on gold top with the natural back and sides, just like the Les Paul. But this one was left alone with a wrap tail piece. I would have taken this opportunity to upgrade the pickups at this time, but whoa, nice. I can see why they had to leave that natural. You know, that's actually a really good idea for this one because you got all that ugliness that you need to either hide or fix or do something with. But since it's got such good wood grain, that's why you leave it. But looking at this photo, I think I'm going to go back to that binding is probably painted on. It's always fun to see what people come up with these old melody makers. But honestly, now looking at the headstock of this one and seeing the three screw truss rod, Kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies that that might have not have been Gibson to start with. Even the headstock is a little bit blockier than usual. And the wood grain doesn't quite 
look like it matches up. You gotta be careful buying old vintage guitars. Yeah, there it is. There's the scarf joint. Somebody had to make a new headstock. Because if you don't know the intricate fine details, and I'm not even claiming I do on the 50s and 60s models, but you can get burned. So if you're ever considering a refinished project guitar, please get somebody to look at it that knows those things intimately. But I think that's about enough fun for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. And remember, don't lend your guitars to friends unless you want Red Burst. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.